gentlemen, and welcome to the half year results presentation uh, of the Durishbourg Group. I'm Pierre Candelier, the CFO of the group, and I will be joined uh, in a few minutes by uh, Abderrahman al uh, Chief Executor of the group. Uh, we will explain to you our results and uh, answer your questions. The full financial information for this half year is available. Uh, the press release, uh, which you certainly have, have seen, uh, has been uh, disclosed. Uh, our half year report uh, together with the appendices, the, the, the financial statements and the auditor's reports is available on our website and our slideshow, uh, which we will go through uh, and which you'll see on our screen is also available on our website. And the video conference uh, will be stored on uh, our YouTube channel, the De Richbourg YouTube channel, a few hours after the meeting, if you want to review it. If you want to ask some question, um, you have a, a button Q and uh, at the top part of the screen, and you can ask your question, and we will uh, answer your question in the second part of the meeting. So uh, let's start with the half year results uh, presentation. Of course, the usual disclaimer, which we will not go through in details. Uh, first, a few uh, words about the comparability of accounts. As you are aware, uh, we had uh, um, a transaction uh, with the multi-service business, which was uh, contributed to Elior on the 18th of April. Uh, as it was very likely as of March 31st that the transaction will uh, go through as most of as the main shareholders of uh, Elior had uh, given support to the project of transaction transaction and as the contribution deed was already signed uh, we had to classify the multi-service business uh, under IFRS, IFRS 5 standard which means that all the assets and related liabilities um, to this business were classified on the single line of the balance sheet uh, in assets and liabilities and the net book value of the multi-service business was 207 million euro. As it was a, a sector under IFRS 8 uh, uh, standard, I, IS 8 standard, uh, we had to classify uh, in the PNL also the multi-service business on a single line of the PNL. We do not report any more uh, revenue, cost, EBITDA, and so on, but only the net income of the business at the bottom. Um, and uh, the figures for 22 are amended accordingly. In this context, we have also to review our segment information uh, as multi-service is no more relevant uh, as an operating sector um, segment. And our new segment information will include two sectors, recycling and service to municipalities, someone named also public sector services. And uh, we also disclose retrospective information. The third item which uh, impacts the comparability of accounts is the ECOR acquisition, because last year we consolidated in the PNL ECOR from December 17, 2021 on, which means three and a half months, whereas uh, this year uh, it's consolidated over six months. And uh, to a lesser extent, it, uh, comparability is also impacted by the fact that we sold uh, eight sites on the, uh, the 2nd of January uh, when we had to implement uh, the remedies uh, to which we had committed uh, by the European Commission. The consideration uh, in this uh, first half year, uh, it is the second best half year uh, for the group in terms of EBITDA, uh, which is a good news. Um, the integration of uh, ECO is successful. We will come back a bit later, but it, it's 90% uh, uh, done. We completed the, the remedies, uh, which was the disposal of eight uh, yards, uh, as we committed to do uh, in, by the European Commission. 
the, we will come back in more detail, but the context for the recycling business was more challenging than the year before. And in this context, uh, we have proved the robustness of our business model. You see it in terms of KPI, EBITDA and EBIT, which are below uh, those of last year, which was a, a, an out of the range uh, context. But nevertheless, uh, these are uh, robust figures. And of course, the half year was a uh, uh, a key keystone was the negotiations uh, with Elior about the contribution of the multi-service business, which resulted in signing on March 6 and closing on April 18. A few words about uh, <clears throat> the context. You know that uh, uh, steel industry is key to us. Uh, and the uh, key industry in 2022 was a bit below the previous years and uh, on a worldwide basis um, the production is back to 2019 levels uh, you see it on a worldwide basis uh, it's 1.9 billion uh, tons um, which is uh, nearly uh, 2019 indeed uh, except um, india and iran all the, but Iran, of course, we cannot sell there. Uh, all the countries are far below uh, 2021. Um, USA uh, by 5 million tons, which is roughly 6%. Um, Brazil, uh, Germany, uh, nearly 10% uh, down. Uh, Turkey, which is an important country to us, um, more 12% down. And all the countries, and Japan and, and uh, Korea, South Korea, you, you have all the 10 first country um, producers of steel uh, which are on this table. Um, we have disclosed on the slide bef uh, before uh, the full year 2022. Uh, as we speak about the H1, we have to explain to you uh, October to March. Uh, compared to pr the prior year. We disclosed number about steel production in Europe, in Turkey, and also uh, aluminium, um, primary aluminium uh, in Central Europe, which is also an important metal for us. So you see that uh, the numbers uh, are down. You see also the last, tw last six months uh, production curve, uh, and we are, of done in particular in Turkey, uh, which have uh, ongoing uh, decreasing trend. And for the aluminium, you see the important part of electricity, which makes the results, uh, the production levels also far below the production of prior year. We will go into the detail of the figures of the PNL. Uh, the revenue turnover is uh, below by 12.7% compared to last year. It stands at 1.8 billion euro. EBITDA is at 179.2 million euro uh, compared to 227.2, which is a decrease by 48 million or 21.1 million. The current EBIT, uh, I would like that to, to say that the EBITDA ratio is at 9.8% compared to 10.9%, uh, but which is still a very good ratio in our uh, sequence of numbers. Um, current EBIT stands at 1.6 million euro compared to 168 million euro, euro last year. We have a number of uh, non-current uh, items, I would say. Um, we made a capital gain when we disposed our remedies, amounting to 12.6 million. Uh, we had some cost when we disposed multi-service um, to Elior, amounting to 2.3 million. And we had an old issue uh, litigation with Veolia. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose this uh, litigation. Uh, we first lost uh, in first instance, we gained in appeal, and uh, the Cassation Court, the Supreme Court in France, um, was in favor of Veolia, so we incurred an expense amounting to 3.7 million euro. 
we of course we go uh, we appeal this uh, judgment and uh, there will be further steps so the ebit is 107 uh, 112.7 million euro which is a decrease of 13 29.8 million euros compared to last year uh, net finance cost is a uh, 13.4 million expense compared to 10 million it's mostly the increase of the interest rate uh, and the Euribor impact. Uh, the EBT is uh, 98 million euros, uh, which is a decrease of 39.9 million euros compared to last year. Income tax is an expense of 26.3 million euros, which makes, I would say, a um, normative income tax of just like slightly higher. Uh, we have the share of uh, result of equity consolidated companies of minus 5.2 million euros, which uh, includes uh, to the extent of minus 5.6 million euros uh, the uh, Elior uh, impact. Uh, it, indeed, it is 24.6% uh, of the 25 million euros uh, loss uh, is disclosed by Elior in uh, H1. And uh, it is, I would say, the magic of the numbers of, uh, of the, or, or the, um, yes, uh, because the multi service uh, which we have contributed to Elior on April uh, 18 um, made a gain of um, 5.6 million euro too, which makes that the net impact of the multi-service and the earlier business is uh, zero, exactly zero on our half year, uh, which would make, uh, I would say, easy uh, to see if uh, the, the resolution of the, of the contribution in the coming years. So the net in income of the consolidated entities is uh, 72 million euros, which is a decrease of uh, 39.1 million euros compared to last year. And out of that, this uh, 71 of this is attributable to the rich board shareholders. Uh, in broad terms, one we can say, um, in addition to what I said before, is that uh, we now have two segments, uh, recycling service to municipalities. Uh, service to municipalities is a recurring business with an ongoing trend of developments. Uh, and our last 12 months EBITDA is 412 million euro EBITDA uh, without including multi-service figures. Mm. Uh, you see on the screen the sequence of uh, the half year of the results over the uh, last five years, excluding multi-service. So you see that uh, the performance has increased over the year uh, and has been boosted by the various um, external growth operations which we made. And uh, last year was a bit special, I would say, and. Uh, we had results a bit out of the sequence. Um, nevertheless, as I said before, uh, this year is the second best results in terms of EBITDA. Let's, let's go back, let's go to the first uh, segment, uh, recycling. Um, turnover is 1.7 billion euros compared to 2 billion euros last year, uh, which is a decrease in 13.9 uh, Percent. Current EBITDA is 108 million euros, a decrease of 20, 22%. A current EBIT 100, uh, the percentage of EBITDA is 9.9%, very close to 10, uh, which is one point below last year. Uh, current EBIT is 107.2 million compared to 165. And you can see the EBIT. So the decrease on volumes in ferro scrap is 3.7 percent. But uh, I remember that last year we consolidated ECOR only on 3.5 uh, months. And uh, you will see a table um, afterwards, which will explain the lack for like volumes. Uh, 
The average prices are lower than in prior year, roughly 60 euro per ton, which is uh, 14%. Uh, Non-ferrous metal are also impacted by the ECO um, uh, consolidation. Uh, the decrease is 3.6%, uh, but 15% on a like-for-like -like basis. Um, uh, primary aluminium waste uh, impacted uh, elect electri elect uh, the prices uh, of the non-ferrous metal uh, significantly, mm, but you will see that all metal are in, are in decrease, but uh, in aluminium in particular, roughly the decrease uh, is 200 euro per ton, which is roughly uh, 9%. The unit margin uh, don't compare to prior year, which was a record year, but are still higher than the average. And the revenue uh, the, and the service, so it's not public to uh, municipality service, but it's, it's the services which are included in recycling because we are we also provide uh, services in this business. They increase by 13%. So you see the commodity price. Uh, so we compare October to March this year to October to March last year. So you see that last year, uh, the H1, it was uh, nearly for all metals an increase uh, with a sharp increase in generally in February and March for all the metals. Uh, and this year it's uh, either a slight decrease or a stable uh, trend of revenue. But in average, we are uh, below last year, roughly 14% for ferrous scrap and 9% for non ferrous metals. Um, <clears throat> so you see the change in volumes for the ferrous scrap. Uh, last year, we had uh, 300, uh, nearly 3.54 billion, a million tons of ferrous scrap. And this year we are at 2.3 million tons. Uh, nevertheless, we have to go into more detail in the volumes um, because uh, last year we had roughly uh, a bit more than uh, 600 tons uh, of ferrous scrap which were brought by uh, ECOR during the 3.5 basis. If we extrapolate on a six month basis, we should have had, I would say, uh, 483 additional ferro scrap tons. Um, and uh, the remedies impact is a decrease by 120,000 uh, tons. Uh, and add, we sold 2.3 million ferro scrap tons. I would say that uh, the difference is a decrease by 16% in the ferro scrap volume, which we call market changes, and which is consistent roughly uh, with the decrease in the market, uh, the steel market, it's a uh, lower left part of the slide. In the European uh, 27 countries, steel production decreased by 15% um, in the H1 compared to H1 last year. Turkey, uh, it's roughly 25-28%, uh, Germany 12 and United States 10%. So the 16% decrease is, uh, is consistent with this market. We made the same calculation um, for uh, non-ferrous metals. Of course, it's more complicated because uh, there are there is a mix of metal. Um, so it's a bit more complicated, but we have a decrease of our underlying markets by 15%. I just I would uh, I would like to come back to say that the uh, remedies impact is far less uh, impacted on the non-ferrous metal compared to the ferrous metal. We sell the yards, we produce uh, many tons of ferrous uh, scrap, but uh, not a lot on non-ferrous metals. Uh, I would say that uh, this year, this half year, it's not easy to uh, to produce uh, like for like uh, figures because of the echo uh, consolidation. Uh, 3.5 months last year, six months this year, and all the numbers we disclose in the particular uh, 
two months and they are impacted by uh, this difference. And indeed, we were so successful in the integration that it's not easy, in particular in France, to say uh, this terms they come from ECO, this cost they come from ECO, uh, and this they come from de Richbourg. So the, we are aware that uh, the comparison is not pure, I would say, but we we good news is that the, indeed there are two good news is that the core consolidation is very successful and that when we go into the year the year uh, the impact will be lower. Uh, but news is that for this half year we have a comparative figure which have which are not 100 percent pure. Uh, last year we had an EBITDA by 298 million euro in uh, recycling in H1. This year is uh, 178 percent, uh, 88 million. Uh, you will see that the market are in decrease on, uh, in all countries, in particular in France, 31.8 million, but also because it is the country where we make most of the EBITDA. Um, and uh, it's uh, usual that uh, when market decreases, uh, the market when you make most of the BDA, of course it's uh, resilient and it, res it resists, but it decreases more than the other countries. Uh, Belgium, a slight decrease, Spain minus 0.4 million. Indeed, you have a decrease in all of the countries. And uh, so it is explained by uh, lower volumes, lower unit margin and additional cost, uh, mostly energy maintenance and to a lesser extent uh, you will see uh, also staff costs. So we have seen by geographies, now we see by, uh, I would say by uh, type of expense. We have a decrease by 29 million of uh, what we call our gross profit. It is uh, our uh, trade margin plus the service revenue in recycling. So decreased by 29, which is, I would say, explain again uh, the mix of uh, lower unit margin plus the difference in consolidation of ECO, uh, 3.5 months last year compared to six uh, months this year. We have an increase by 15 million in staff cost. Also, uh, it is an increase roughly by 5% of our staff cost uh, in France, a little more in other countries, but also uh, the consolidation of cost over six months this year compared to 3.5 months last year. Energy and maintenance cost increased by 13 million. I will spend a little time on energy cost uh, after that. Um, we have a ex positive exchange impact of 2 million, uh, lesser accruals uh, plus 3 million, uh, insurance uh, positive by 2 million, and other positive by 1 million. Uh, electricity costs in France, they have actually increased very significantly from 1st of uh, January on, uh, onwards. Uh, it's not, uh, it's multiplied by 2 to 2.5 compared to 2022. Uh, the ele price electricity is uh, fixed for the full year 2022, civil year. Uh, we have hedged most of our civil year 24 um, <clears throat> and it will be uh, much lower than 2023, but nevertheless slightly higher than uh, 2022. Um, so we have to spend to uh, to to live with uh, seven months uh, with painful electricity prices. Uh, I remember we have avoided the worst prices uh, during August to uh, first part of October last year to, to hedge our electricity price, but based on our, on our contract, we had to fix the price before end of October, and uh, we, we fixed the price on 21st of October last year, which result is this uh, higher prices compared to last year. So um, we estimate that the impact of, on, 
full year basis will be an increase um, in 20 by 21 million euro. Part of it is already in the cost, the part to uh, from January to March. Uh, but there is, I would say, more to come. Uh, the good news is that uh, from January on uh, next year, it will be significantly lower. A few words to service to municipalities, uh, which we did not disclose separately last year because uh, uh, it's a new segment, so we call it sometimes a public sector service. We will, we will have to harmonize the wording. Uh, revenue increases by 16%. Uh, EBDA uh, is, uh, at, stands at 14.8%, uh, which is an increase by 22% and a good ratio at 16.5% of the revenue. Current EBIT is a 72%. There is a lot of depreciation in this business. Um, it's a recurring business. Um, I would say that in France, we have uh, good returns on EBITDA and EBIT, and normally the best in class performance in France. Um, so the increase is by 16% uh, is increased by two thirds by, uh, the start of the, the new contract in Paris. We already had the contract, but we renewed then to the imp to improved conditions in September. So over the year, there will be you will see the impact of this uh, better economic terms. We also start the contracts in Nantes, Nantes in April 22. Uh, the activity in Canada is uh, stable over the half year, so it should be roughly stable over the year. Uh, we have an additional slide when we uh, give a little more detail uh, in what we do um, in this uh, business. Uh, we do most of it is a uh, scrap collection, uh, cleaning, Cleaning is a street cleaning. It's not the cleaning of the multi-service. Uh, it's not the multi-service segment in this business. It's a, it's a service to municipalities. Uh, we do some dump management, uh, sorting centers management, but most of it is a collection, uh, household waste collection. The people which come back uh, in your street and collect the, the waste. So the division has a selective approach to the market. In a, uh, the, we only go to tenders uh, when uh, the uh, customers is attached to the quality of the service and not the, to the uh, less expensive price. A few words to uh, holding segment. Not much to say. Stable. Uh, balance sheet uh, <clears throat> is also uh, stable equity, 923 million euro, and uh, most of the changes are explained uh, on the next page. Uh, it is, uh, this page is impacted by uh, IFRS classification of the multi-service uh, capex uh, over the um, half year, and uh, I would say a change in working capital. Net debt uh, was uh, 563 million uh, as of September. It is uh, 70, uh, 735 million as of March. I would say that there are two non-recurring items, uh, or at least non-recurring for a half year. Uh, we paid uh, 51, 51 million dividend uh, on this half year um, with and we will not pay dividend in H2. And we have a 47.8 million in working capital requirement, uh, which would I would say is seasonal and should partly reverse or totally re reverse in uh, H2. Uh, usually we have a working capital requirement, which is higher in March than in September. And in March uh, 23, it was uh, impacted by the strikes with uh, Take, uh, took place in France, where you remember that we had uh, uh, 11 uh, strikes. Uh, most of them were in H1, and uh, we were 
impacted in our uh, dock, we could not uh, load the vessels that we wanted to 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 dock uh, to load uh, because we we load the regularly vessels to Turkey to Spain, and they were uh, to some extent postponed to April. The other part, you know, the bricks, I would say, uh, the ABDA we, we have already spoken about, uh, uh, finance cost, income tax, uh, slightly different number that in the PL because it's the amount paid. Uh, we had um, capex by 122 million euros. Uh, we, we say that uh, on a multi year basis, uh, EBITDA should be roughly 50%, capex should be roughly 50% of our EBITDA. You see that the number is uh, higher uh, on this uh, half year. We have already said last year that uh, there will come one year which will, where it will exceed uh, 50% because in prior year we were far below. Uh, we have committed to a significant uh, capex program uh, last year and due to the time to to commit to make the capex uh, become real actual uh, there is a one year i would say it, they come in their accounts uh, one year to one and a half year uh, after this year we should be in a uh, full year of 2050 to 2070 million euros the good news is that we have a big part of uh, development capex much higher than in the year before uh, and they should bring additional bda from next year on uh, for uh, secret of the business uh, i would not detail everything uh, but uh, they will bring a bda from next year on uh, you see the asset disposal which is the remedies uh, and uh, there is also in other uh, the impact of the classification of the multi-service business uh, in the ifrs 5. Uh, the last last 12 months EBDA is 412 million as I said before and pro forma leverage ratio is 1.8. I will go very fast uh, over uh, this next two slide because I see that uh, the time is going. Um, so just to say that we have uh, no no significantly uh, um, financing lines to uh, uh, we have long term visibility on that. Uh, I will go also very fast to the contribution uh, of the multi service business to Elio uh, because uh, we had a special meeting about that just to say that uh, um, we will continue uh, to consolidate uh, Elio with the equity uh, method uh, based on the governance agreement which was signed on the 17th of April. Uh, just a few words on that. Uh, the Richbourg uh, cannot vote at it, is, at it once uh, at the Ageron, AG, AGM of Elio. It is a board of uh, Elio which decides um, According uh, how uh, the Richbourg will vote uh, uh, at the AGM of Elior at the board, so which is a deciding body of Elior, the uh, Richbourg is, does not have the majority of the seats. We have five seats out of 12. Uh, five are also for independent members and uh, two for uh, representative of the employees. And uh, there are several types of uh, majority of, at the board uh, of Elior and for the key decisions, uh, financial policy, dividends, uh, external growth, significant and external growth operations and a few other decisions. Uh, there must be a majority of eight out of 10 of the board members and uh, the majority uh, of the independent uh, uh, members have to vote in favor three out of five minimum uh, of the decisions and the process of selections of the board or independent board members the Richbourg is not at all uh, implicated in that uh, there is an independent uh, process selection uh, so there are true independent and uh, we can uh, not um, 
impact their uh, decision. So um, for this, uh, I would say, funnel of um, facts, uh, the Richburg does not have the control of the LEO uh, board and uh, will continue to co consolidate LEO with equity method. Uh, I will not go in detail uh, in the LEO results. Uh, this is not the purpose. We do not control LEO and LEO uh, has already disclosed its uh, H1 results. Uh, so this is the process of the contribution. Uh, we have already spoken. I want to keep some time for your questions. So we had already had specific meeting uh, for this transaction. We can go further. This one we will skip also. Uh, I would say that the interest of the uh, contribution is to make a new leader uh, in uh, catering and uh, multi-service. Uh, you will see the strengths of the new group in uh, contract catering, of course, uh, and in the multi-service cleaning. And the Richbourg has bring, brought additional business where Elior was, was not a very small uh, player, uh, green areas, energy efficiency, uh, temporary staff, and also a uh, very interesting business in aeronautics, what we call industry. And it also reinforced the uh, strengths of Elior in the end markets, business and industry, educations, and health and uh, wealth care. It, it has also a uh, balanced uh, portfolio in terms of geographies, France, Spain, United Kingdom, Italy, and of course, United States. What was interesting in this transaction uh, for Elio, it was also the culture of the multi-service, very agile, efficient organization, very lean, uh, client-centric, and uh, with the cross selling capacities, uh, the abilities to sell to the same customer, uh, cleaning, uh, catering, and uh, uh, cleaning uh, temporary staff, energy, and so on. Uh, and with a very accurate culture of cash and uh, cost, uh, uh, cost controlling. So we expect uh, by the end of 2026 at least 30 million of synergies. 60% uh, of these synergy are cost synergies. Uh, they have been uh, uh, estimated by LEO on an independent basis, and LEO will report regularly of uh, the implementation of these synergies. Uh, of course, it has a positive impact on the financial profile of uh, Elior. It is rel uh, relative from uh, an EBITDA uh, percentage point of view, uh, EBITDA percentage point of view, and also from the uh, leverage. Uh, it decreases the leverage uh, profile by, uh, of Elior by uh, two times uh, before uh, taking into account of the the uh, synergies. Uh, just uh, one thing I would like to say, uh, the Richbourg will record in H2 a non-cash gain on uh, 47 million euros uh, in their accounts. Uh, it's a bit a technical issue. Uh, you have, we have said before that the value uh, of the multi-service business was uh, 206 million euro. Um, and uh, as Elior is a quoted company, we have to record the contribution of uh, Elior uh, at the price of uh, the Elior share on the day the contribution took place, which was the uh, 18th of uh, April. It is uh, according to IFRS 10 and 13. And uh, the value of the multi service uh, on that day was 200. Uh, not on the multi service of the share received, uh, the your share received was 253 million euro. So we'll report again. Uh, for the value of the multi of, of the Elior business at the Richbourg, we will continue to measure uh, the utility, utility value uh, of Elior with a number of methods, uh, discounting of cash flow based 
of uh, the financial information uh, given by Elior to the market. Of course, we, we are also aware of the, your share price and also to the uh, peers uh, financial information and uh, multiples. The outlook. So a slide, there is a number, uh, uh, you, you know that the steel industry, it makes roughly five to seven percent of the uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, uh, on a worldwide basis. And uh, in order to the reduce the footprint and the greenhouse gas emissions of the uh, steel industry, there is a number of uh, projects uh, which uh, Either are uh, new electric arc funnel steel, which are the one which are on this slide, uh, which would uh, come into activity between 2027 and 2030. In addition, uh, in on this slide, there, there are 16 add million additional tons of uh, steel capacity, which uh, translate into uh, 16 to 20 million uh, additional demand for feral scrap. But in addition to that, which is not on this slide, uh, there will be some uh, direct reduced iron uh, um, uh, new uh, steel mills, uh, which will reduce the direct iron uh, either through gas or mainly through uh, hydrogen. Uh, and they will bring, uh, they will be coupled by uh, with um, uh, steel mill, which which, which will uh, use in priority the DRI, but will also can use to a part uh, steel uh, ferro scrap. So uh, you see that in the long term there will be huge demand for ferro scrap, and we are fully confident uh, that we'll, uh, we will have a higher demand for our products uh, within uh, a few years. In the short term, uh, you know the context, you are uh, familiar with that, war in uh, the invasion of Russia in Ukraine, inf inflation, rising interest rates, question about how the economy uh, will change uh, in Europe, United States, in, in other markets. Nevertheless, we remain confident in the future of our business model. Uh, we have always uh, been uh, able to to take advantage of, uh, I would say, uh, middle, uh, mild or lower uh, economic conditions, uh, either to increase our market shares or to buy competitors. Uh, so we expect to that it will continue to to be like that. We generally we are better than our competitors in uh, low economic conditions. We will continue and uh, finish our capex development plan over the end of this year and the beginning of uh, next year. We are still exploring. Uh, external growth opportunities which would make industrial and economic sense. It will not say that it will uh, uh, crystallize uh, in the next six to 12 months, but uh, there are a few companies which we monitor. Um, so we are fully confident uh, in the future on our business model. Thank you. Sorry for being uh, a bit long, but there was a lot to say. Uh, I will look uh, if some questions uh, have uh, been. So I see that there is a, a few questions. I just release the question. Uh, a question about the many opportunity that I think I uh, already answered to that. A uh, question about the litigation of uh, against Veolia. Uh, we have uh, recorded in our accounts uh, the worst case uh, scenario. Uh, the question about the outlook. 
profitability rates to be stable in the short term? Uh, is it for Dorisburg as a whole or service to collectivity? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's for service to collectivity. Uh, for the profitability rate to the rich board, we expect uh, uh, profitability rate to remain high. Um, nevertheless, it, uh, it's, it's sometimes, I would say, beyond our control because of the prices of the commodities, uh, which is uh, because we cannot uh, monitor them. We we remind that uh, we uh, try to work with the fixed unit margin, but nevertheless, uh, it is impacted by the prices, which are still the good prices. In, uh, of course, they are much lower than last year, but if you have a long-term sequence, we are still at uh, market uh, prices, which are higher than it was in the years before. And one reason for that is it is also linked to inflation. Um, the correct price for uh, ferrous scrap, non-ferrous metals, it has increased and we have observed for, I would say, 24 months than when the contractor, uh, the economic conditions, they are not uh, uh, so good. The, ma the pr market price um, uh, decreased. Nevertheless, it does not decrease so. Uh, low that it used before because it uh, costs higher to collect the ferro scrap. And if we want that the collection con continue, uh, you still need uh, to be incentive for the small scrap collectors. And uh, I would say um, it's a bit complicated to say uh, that the lower prices, the low prices are higher than before. Sorry for the complexity of the sentence but uh, low prices I, uh, um, we are confident with the prices. Uh, are there other questions uh, in the chat? Um, you can ask, uh, you can ask additional question if you want. Ah, yes, there uh, are uh, plenty, sorry. Um, increase in order in Turkey. Uh, I would say that the market in Turkey, um, it has been uh, on a downward trend uh, uh, in recent months. Uh, there, there was a few weeks where there were, there was plenty of orders. Uh, all I would say the steel makers, they ordered in the same time. I think that uh, for the time being, the orders are a bit quiet. They expect, I would say, the results of the election, uh, the polls, the election, which is uh, in the coming days. Uh, they are, they have difficult times on the worst the earthquake, uh, the inflation. Uh, nevertheless, the, it's a great country uh, with a great uh, people, and they have always made. Uh, good in the whatever I would say the economic conditions. Uh, so we are confident that the, they have the best electric arc uh, furnace steel mills in the world with the higher biggest furnace. So we are confident that the Turkey maybe in this week or next week, but in the coming uh, in the coming months, it remains uh, a big market. Uh, there is also a new emerging market with a uh, which um, I would say uh, takes. Uh, more uh, room on the international market. It is India and its related market, Bangladesh. Uh, you have seen on the first slide uh, that uh, now the population in China and in, in India they are exactly the same, but um, China produced roughly nine times more steel than uh, India. So uh, the steel production in India is expected to to increase significantly in the coming uh, in the coming months and years. 
Uh, does it mean that you expect energy cost to be divided by two in 2024? No, uh, because in energy cost, we do not have only electricity. We also have uh, uh, fuel, uh, gas and so other costs, but we expect uh, electricity to reduce significantly by 2024, I would say from uh, January uh, 1st, because um, uh, it is on a civil basis. New question. Uh, a question about the multi-service uh, business. Uh, some people find that the 5.6 million uh, uh, on net profit is a bit low. Uh, I would say that um, it is comparable to last year, uh, 6.7 million euro last year uh, with a 50 million EBDA. It is a business where the H2 is generally much higher than H1, in particular in the cleaning business. Uh, so if you look at of the sequence of EBDA in the multi-service in the, I would say the past 10 years, H2 won uh, each year much better than H1. So uh, it is in trend with, uh, uh, I would say, nearly in trend with the 50 million uh, last year. There is a question about uh, energy cost and uh, capex. And uh, energy cost, I would say, I, I said, I think I said already a bit, a lot about that. Uh, I remember uh, gas, we are, and gas uh, for our uh, refining facility, we are hedged until 2024. So we do not have uh, an increase in that cost uh, uh, for the French part. Uh, we, are, we are hedged in France. In France, we are not hedged in Spain. Um, and uh, we do not expect a significant increase. We expect the good uh, window to hedge uh, 25 in the gas, but the market is uh, not uh, as uh, liquid uh, or fluent as it used to be, and uh, there are no possibility to hedge for 2025 for the time being. Um, and uh, electricity, uh, hedge, we hedge uh, 2024. Uh, and uh, and uh, 2024 is a hedge in electricity in France and from January 1st on. Uh, ECO has contracts which are a bit more complicated and not favorable compared to the Dirichbourg contracts. And uh, at the end on 24, we will also move them to Dirichbourg contracts. Uh, CAPEX uh, for 23, uh, we, as I said before, we expect uh, between 20, 250 and 270 million CAPEX. Uh, 24, we expect a CAPEX with, which will be lower than in 23. Uh, we will reduce, uh, we will continue our development capex, which will bring additional EBITDA, and we will reduce our maintenance capex because uh, uh, we we took some advance, uh, I would say we, we made some advance uh, maintenance in advance, and we can uh, reduce our maintenance capex uh, for one or two years. So we should uh, come back uh, this year. We will exceed the 50, 50 million guidance, 50 percent guidance, and uh, this year we will. Uh, next year we will. We expect uh, on a multi-year basis to be close. Uh, what is the FRS impact on EBDA? Uh, I invite you to to go to our half year report to, to see the numbers because I don't have